Over the last two years, I've seen a huge demand for 3D scanning heads and people using Curie Engine. It has become one of the most asked questions on our YouTube channel, and it is also the most demanded feature on our Discord community. So today, I'm going to show you how you can do a detailed head scan using Curie Engine and make them super dope to be 3D printed. And guess what? At the end of this video, I've prepared a cheat sheet for you so you can quickly follow along in Blender and start cleaning up the 3D model even if you didn't know anything about it before. So make sure to watch until the end. So in this video, not only am I going to do a full tutorial on how to properly 3D scan people, but also I'll show you how to clean up the scans in Blender using these super easy steps. By the way, everything I'm showing you today uses the absolutely free features in Curie Engine. So without further ado, let's get started. To make a perfect human scan, we're going to use the photo scan mode in Curie Engine. Because among all the 3D scanning methods, photo scan can produce the most detailed mesh, and more importantly, it is completely free. First, let's talk about photo taking. Because a living person has to breathe, it's impossible to make them stay absolutely still. The small movements of the person during photo taking will definitely make their skin surface not as smooth. But still, the smaller the movement is, the better the result. So having said that, we should take photos really fast around the person to reduce the level of movement as much as possible. For that, I actually recommend using your phone's native camera app. No matter how well we tune our in-app camera control, the truth is the native camera app is always better. On my iPhone, I'm going to turn off the live camera mode as well as the flashlight. And also, I'm locking the exposure and focus so the color tone on my images will be consistent throughout the photo set. If you use an Android, I'm sure there are similar features, just do the same and the final result will be equally good. For the head scan, try to find a position where you can comfortably stay still for like half a minute and stare at one spot as steadily as you can. Don't follow the camera with your eyeballs because I sure did it myself the first time when Chris was trying to 3D scan me and the result turned out a little bit creepy. So to make a great head scan, find a spot where you can constantly stare at and let your friends start taking photos. The person who's taking the photo should walk around you as fast as you can while keeping the shots sharp and clear. And honestly, with today's smartphone, you just gotta keep tapping the shutter button while walking around. The camera has become good enough to keep photos sharp even during fast movements. Also, do three rotations when taking photos around. One straight ahead, one at the upper angle to cover the top of the head, and one at the lower angle to capture the areas under your chin. Some may ask, why not just take a video instead of having to take all these photos? Well, the reason is that a video will always have motion blur. So when you try to extract the frames from the video, they will look blurrier than photos. And I don't know about you guys, but I found it not that hard to take a bunch of photos for photo scanning. So let's just keep it this way for human scan. And after the three rotation photo taking, you should have taken around 100 photos, which is perfect because the free version of Kiri Engine allows you to upload exactly 100 photos for each scan. If you have fewer photos after the 3D rotation, maybe try to tap on the shutter button faster because the more photo you have, the better the result will be. Although Kiri Engine has algorithms to automatically correct and filter the failed images, for our occasion, I'd still like to go through each one of the images and delete the ones that are too blurry before uploading them to the server. But hey, I know every phone camera is different. If you found you have too many blurry images in the photo set, maybe you should start over and take the photos around at a slower pace. When it's done, it's finally the time to upload the photo set to Curie Engine. There are actually two ways to upload. You can either upload them directly through the Curie Engine app on your phone, or you can upload them via its website version on your computer browsers. The website version is exceptionally useful for more professional photo taking methods. I use my phone camera in this video, but what if you have a more professional photo taking equipment? I've seen people using badass photogrammetry rigs that can take nearly hundreds of high quality images all at once, in which case you can just copy all those images to your computer and upload them via our website. Anyways, back to the show. While everything else should be pretty straightforward on the uploading page, there's one option that can be a little bit confusing, which is the auto object masking switch. It actually doesn't really so much in our head scanning case, but if we decide to turn it on, 
Curry Engine will automatically remove the background on the image and give you a cleaner head 3D model. So, let's turn it on. Having uploaded images, it should take about 10 minutes to process, but depending on how busy the server is, you may need to queue up before it gets to your turn. But you'll receive a notification when it's done, and when it's done, the head 3D scan will look something like this. Well, I'd say not so bad, except the blob thingy on my head. But it's okay, because it will be an easy fix in Blender, and which we'll be talking about very soon. The reason there's a blob on my head is because the auto object masking that we turned on during photo uploading wasn't able to generate a clean mesh for the top part of my head. If you don't turn the auto object masking on, the result will look like this. See, the blob disappeared. But instead, because of the background noise, it created a small amount of floaters around my head. Well, you can use either scans, but I just find that dealing with the blob is a bit easier than deleting the floaters in Blender. But let me show you one more thing before we export the model to Blender. There's a crop feature in Kiri Engine. With that, you can just crop out the unwanted parts to make it more like a head statue when we 3D print it. It's pretty handy. Alright, once we're good with the 3D scan, let's export it to Blender for cleanups. Um, I know there's so much better and more professional ways to clean up the model, but like I said before, my goal here is to show you the easiest ways to quickly learn how to clean up the 3D model and make it good-ish. So even if you didn't know anything about cleanup at all, which I believe most of us are, in the next 5 minutes, you will just learn a new skill to impress your friends. Once we have the model imported, the chances are that it won't be in a good orientation. So let's rotate the model first. Alright, after we're happy with the straightened model position, let's switch to the sculpt mode in Blender. There are a lot of sculpting tools available in Blender, but guess what? We are only gonna need three of these, smooth, crease, and clay strips. Not so bad, right? And let's start with the smooth. We use smooth to clean up rough and bumpy surfaces. First of all, let's change the strength to 0.5. This will be a little bit heavy, it's for smoothing the areas that don't need too much detail. So, they would be my cheeks, chin, neck, nose, and a little bit of my forehead that's not covered by hair. Once we identify those areas, let's start brushing. For smaller areas, you can either reduce the brush radius, or just use a swirl to zoom into the model so the brush size will just become relatively small. And yep, you just keep brushing on them until you are satisfied with the smoothness of your skin. Now, let's reduce the smooth strength to 0.2. It will leave more details on the surface, and I think the areas that deserve more detail are my lips, eyelids, and my ears. Uh, by the way, my eyebrows aren't that obvious, and plus, I don't grow my beards, so if you have more facial hairs, you can also do light smoothing there as well. Or sometimes, even leave it unsmoothed can make it interesting results. So yeah, brush like what we did just now, but you definitely should pay more attention. For example, when smoothing my ear, I like to zoom in and follow the ridges. This will prevent me from smoothing all the areas that I want to keep. If you made any mistakes, just hit Ctrl Z to roll back and do it again. It's pretty intuitive. Alright, this whole smoothing process only took me about 10 minutes in real life, and obviously I didn't put too much effort in making all the detail visible, but you're always welcome to use smaller brush size to make the details show better. And now, let's deal with the blob on my hair. We're gonna use the crease tool. Basically, just rub around the blob until it kinda disappears. See? Told you it's easy to fix. And you don't even need to make it super detailed, because once we have a rough shape on my head, we're gonna use the clay strips tool to add extra layers to my hair. I'm gonna set the strength to 0.6, but if you want a thicker hair, feel free to increase the strength and vice versa, decrease the strength if you want thinner hair. And check this out guys, imagine that you're combing your hair, we start from the world, and we come through. After some brushing over, I just created this really cool sculpture-like hairstyle. Isn't this awesome? There's one more step to do to make our head scan more impressive, let's add eyeballs. Our eyeballs are basically just spheres guys, so let's switch to the object mode and add a UV sphere. Then we can press S on our keyboard to scale the eyeball to correct the size and press G to move it to the right position. When we press G, we can then press X or Y or Z on our keyboard to move it along the corresponding axis. Once we're happy with the first eyeball, then we can press Alt plus D to duplicate the eyeball to move to the second eye position. 
Basically, that's it. But feel free to take more time to refine the details using the techniques we just learned. When we are happy with the result, we can export it as STL and start the 3D print. Not so bad, right? And I'll do you one more favor. I've made this cheat sheet that has laid out all the steps to follow in Blender for cleaning up the 3D model. I have the embedded link in the description area, so feel free to grab it. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you like what we're doing here at Curie, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.